On entering security, we were told that all hand luggage had to be searched by hand. This meant that security took well over an hour and it was chaotic. The departure lounge in Terminal 1 was much busier than I expected. I'd previously been in Edinburgh, Gatwick and Heathrow airports and they were very quiet. The majority of stores in the departure lounge were open, there were a handful that were still closed. One thing to mention, there weren't many places to get any food. I only saw Boots, Starbucks and Pricked open when I was there. Everywhere else was closed. Boarding the aircraft was fast, there were only around 100 passengers on the flight and upper class passengers got to board first. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain. My name is Andrew. I'm very warm welcome on board flight to Barbados. Flight time, uh, eight hours and eight minutes. Jason's in charge of the cabin. He and his wonderful team will do the very best to make you most comfortable. Do please pay particular attention to safety briefing. We're on the flight deck today, fellow pilot uh, Christian Scanchinocci. Uh, he'll be flying you today and he'll get back to you just prior to our December update of the weather. Expected arrival time. In the meantime, we're departing to the
The amenity pack is on your seat as you board, and as you'll see, they've changed it somewhat over the last year. They've went for a more sustainable product with bamboo toothbrushes and a recyclable packaging. Also on the seat on boarding was a small safety pack. Inside was a small rubbish bag to throw away face masks and hand sanitizer sachets, two antibacterial wipes for your seat and tray table, two sachets of antibacterial hand sanitizer and three face masks. On the back of the safety pack were some guidelines on how to keep yourself safe and clean throughout the flight. When I've flown previously with Virgin Atlantic and Upper Class, I was offered a glass of champagne once I was seated. However, this wasn't offered on today's flight, I'm assuming due to COVID precautions. Drinks were offered once we took off. They've also replaced the large bottles of alcohol at the bar with these small miniatures. It was nice to see Virgin still offering proper cutlery on board when other airlines are offering plastic cutlery in first class. They still also offer their infamous salt and pepper shakers. Overall the meal was okay, the main meal didn't have much taste and I didn't enjoy it, however the cheese and the pudding were nice. The base of the pudding was incredibly difficult to eat and I had to actually use a knife and fork to cut through it. I usually find the entertainment on board Virgin really good. They've got a large selection of movies, TV shows, music and games to keep you occupied. There's also a news channel which is regularly updated throughout the flight. For today's flight, I went with Bedding Crashers, a Louis Theroux documentary and 1917.
One of the great features of the 787 aircraft and the Virgin Fleet is they have this fantastic bar area towards the back of the upper class cabin. The bars are normally stacked with alcohol, glasses and snacks, but as you'll see here, there is nothing left out in the bar area. I'm assuming Virgin are trying to stop passengers sitting at the bar and to allow for social distancing. As there are currently no bar snacks on the upper class bar, you're directed to the Wonder Wall which is between the upper class cabin and the premium cabin. Here you'll find lots of snacks, popcorn and sweets, and a fridge stocked with drinks also. There are four toilets located at the back of the upper class cabin. Two larger toilets as you can see here, and then two smaller toilets. The toilets have lots of space with this small stool, so you can sit down if you need to get changed. A large baby change area, and some rain hand wash and hand moisturiser. Another great feature of these 787s are the dimmable window switchings. These allow you to have the window fully open so the sunlight can come in fully and it can graduate through different variants making it darker or lighter. As you can see here this is fully dark and you can still see it from the window but no sunlight is coming in. Virgin offer Wi-Fi on all of their flights, so today I chose the cheapest package at just under £3. This allowed me to use WhatsApp, iMessage and emails for around 3 or 4 hours before my data ran out. You'll see the other packages listed here. You can pay via credit and debit cards and PayPal and it was very easy to set up. These are the controls that convert the seat into a bed. It's very simple to do but the staff will happily do it for you. The seat folds forward fully flat and stored behind the seat is a duvet and a decent mattress protector. There's also a pillow stored behind your seat as well. Afternoon tea was delivered around 90 minutes before we were due to land. I've included the menu so you can see what was offered. The sandwiches and pastries were delicious. All the magazines and duty-free catalogues have been taken away from the seat pockets, however the safety card is obviously still present. Duty-free is still available on the flight, you just need to ask the crew members. One of the features of the 787 seat style is that the seats face inwards towards the cabin. This means if you're sat in the G or the K seats, you're facing other passengers. However, I prefer the A seats as you have the back of the G seats and nobody looking in on you. I hope you find this video useful, especially if you're planning on travelling with Virgin Atlantic and upper class over the next couple of months when restrictions start to loosen. The flight was very different from previous upper class flights I've taken with Virgin Atlantic. However, the staff on board were fantastic. The aircraft was clean with lots of COVID precautions taken on board 
and it was fantastic value for money for what we paid for upper class seats.